We welcome you to another edition of the official Titans podcast. This indeed is the OTP. My name is Mike Keith, and Amy Wells is alongside virtually. Why, hello, hello Ms. Wells. Mike. Hi, Mike. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. And we are thrilled to be joined by the head football coach of your Tennessee Titans, Mike Vrabel. Coach, it is so good to see you after several weeks. I miss you, Mike. I miss you, Amy. <laughs> good to see you coach now where are you coach are you is that your office uh this is the basement so we have a um areas that that we have to go to that we're forced to to be in and i was tearing jen's uh office apart so she sent me down here and carter and tyler and jackson and jen all had their own areas is this where you plan to be during the draft this is yep this is where they're gonna set it up and and, uh, you know, Russ and everybody in IT is going to get that going here after they finish up at John's and kind of use his as a, a trial run to see what we'll need. And this is what we'll have. Got some TVs and, and have some computers and some surfaces, and we'll do it that way. Now, Coach, with so many people in the house, how in the world are you getting anything done right now? Well, it's um, it's been good. Tyler's got a routine, and he's meeting with his – offensive line group at eight o'clock in the morning and then they work out and Carter's graduating Father Ryan and just has to um, log on at eight and have his stuff turn in at 11.59. So I think he's getting ready for college. And uh, he, he, we trust him to do it and he's been doing a pretty good job of it. So, you know, I'm proud of everybody that, that uh, we've, we've done a good job and, and, and really res- remain respectful to, to everybody and what they're trying to do. So you've developed a routine. Yeah, and that's the thing we found that John and I have found talking to these draft guys on on FaceTime or or Zoom is that, you know, the same routine that we would have of getting up and turn the turn the garage into a uh into a workout room. And so we got stuff out there and trying to uh get up and work out and get get our day started just like we would um at the facility, check in with the defensive staff, check in with with Arthur and the offensive staff and to make sure that that stretch and and Auk and, and Crow and everybody are doing well. This is the first time that the official Titans podcast has ever had an audience. We say welcome to Titans season ticket members who are joining us for this edition of the OTP with Coach Vrabel. Amy, this is pretty exciting. It's so fun. And Mike, I think that what we could do is we could ramp up the level of excitement that's happening right now. Why don't we have the people who are watching send in questions while we're doing this? Oh, great. We have that technology here in 2020. So why doesn't everybody use hashtag OTPQ and tweet us your questions live and we will ask them of Mike Rabel. Utilizing repeat, technology. Repeat that one more time. Hashtag OTPQ. All right. All of the questions on this edition of the OTP for the head coach have been sent in prior via tennesseetitans.com slash OTPQs. These are all fan questions. And so we're going to get – there it is. Hashtag OTPQ. So if you want to add to our list of questions, you can do it right now as we're doing this edition of the official Titans podcast. How do you think the lack of face-to-face contact will affect the draft night process for – you, John, and Ryan Cowden, your coaches, everybody associated. I don't, I don't think it will affect us in, in one way to, to find the best players for our football team and for this city. I, I think it will be unique, but I don't think it will affect um, the players that we bring in. Um, we, we, we sit there and, you know, John, I could get John on, on my laptop and I could FaceTime him right now while we're talking. We just got done talking to players um, through FaceTime. Um, so we'll do the same thing on, on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Tyler from Hawaii asks, when you're evaluating a draft prospect, how significant is the level of competition in considering how draftable a player is? Which holds more weight, traits or production? I think that, um, you know, you always want to watch the tape, and, and it's very important. It's critical. You know, it's very critical to me. Uh, to, to watch them against good competition. But then in the end of the day, you understand that there are there's a ton of players that come from smaller schools that weren't in a, a power five conference, let's say, 
And so then you have to go and, and do a little bit more digging, potentially work them out, potentially see them uh, move around, and then try to have a vision for what that player may be on your football team. Gary in Clarksville would like to know, in a perfect world, how many touches would Derrick Henry get in a game? Uh, as many as we need to win. That's really – that's the that's the whole objective. And, um, you know, we, we believe that you have to be able to run the football. You have to be able to play great defense. You know, but we're, we're continuing to, to improve and, and we're throwing the ball effectively, um, you know, and protect the quarterback. But, you know, Derrick is such a large part of what we do and, and in our style and then which we play with. Um, so it's important that, that he continues to – to do that not only uh, early in the season, but late in the season when you've seen him um, have, have a lot of personal success uh, and also a lot of success for our team. Larry from Nashville says, going into the first night of the draft, how set is your complete draft board ranking? Is there a lot of fluctuation after that first night based on who or which positions you took? Well, I mean, I don't want to speak for John because him and I communicate about the draft and about players, but, but ultimately, um, it, I, I would just say that the, the, the board's not going to change based on who got picked. I mean, you're always going to have dilemmas and discussions about players that are rated at the same level, but different positions. And so which position wins out, there may be another a position may win out based on need or based on, um, what's what we value more. But, but that, that's not going to change and move guys around. Alan from Clarksville asks, are there any plans to change the defensive scheme or will the defensive scheme mainly stay the same this season? Well, I think every year offensively in, in all three phases, defensively and special teams, you know, we're always trying to, to enhance the things that we did well and, and, and improve and, and fix the things that we didn't do very well. And so there'll be a lot of carryover. There'll, there'll, be, a, there'll be things that we change and there'll be things that, you know, we, we continue to, to try to implement to help our players. I think um, going into our third year, I think it's going to be important that we still are trying to do things um, creatively, that, that some of these players that have been with us for two years. And when I was thinking in the offseason about the message, I didn't know what it was going to be, but I knew that we needed to do things a little bit differently or a little bit more creatively to keep the guys, Kevin Byard, Kenny Vaccaro, um, guys that have been with us, uh, Ben Jones, Taylor, all these guys that have been with us for a couple of years, keep them stimulated. Well, little did I know that it could potentially involve a, a virtual off-season program. I, I don't know if I, I thought that one up. This is a good one, Coach. This is from Thane. He's 11 years old, and he's in Flora, Illinois. And he says, Coach, with the draft, do you draft by position need or best player? You always have to find, um, you know, I think in, in, for the head coach, I, I try to look at what pieces we filled uh, in, in the offseason through free agency. And, and you're certainly going to have to um, take care of some needs throughout the draft. And then there's also times where you look up and you say, well, you just can't pass on this guy. He's the best player. So there's a combination of both. Um, because you have to fill out a roster. You know I mean? You have to make sure that, that you have, you know, positions taken care of or, or backups or special teams players or rotational players. Coach, here is a question from hashtag OTPQ. It says, my son wants to know if Coach Vrabel wrote the Hog Molly's books. He absolutely loves them. Of, of course I wrote them. I, um, <laughs> I wrote and I did the, the illustration. Um, for the book. No, we, we have a great staff um, and, and it's a collaborative effort. Uh, we do have one illustrator who I think got this thing going because he's amazing uh, with, with the color, uh, the characters. And, and I think that that's really what, what got this thing going and, and really grabbed the, the kids' attention was, was just the illustration. And then, you know, the storylines continue to evolve. Tell everybody what the Hog Molly's book is, is all about and what it relates to with your foundation. So the Second and Seventh Foundation just celebrated 20 years. Wow. Uh, it's, a, it's a literacy foundation. Uh, we promote literacy 
uh, not only in and around central Ohio, but, but throughout the state of Ohio. And then it's be, begin to branch out to, to different areas when, when players or coaches leave and move on, we'll send them books and they can go and, and read to second graders and pass out books uh, and try to just explain the importance of, of not only reading, but, but being able to comprehend uh, what you read to be able to, to do your job, whether that's to, to play a sport um, or anything that you would choose to do. Now, here's a question from Brandon in Collierville. He says, the Titans roster is clearly going to be a younger team, mirroring excuse me, a trend seen in all major sports. What are your thoughts about this developing trend of teams being younger? It's, it's not – I always try to explain to the players, and, and, and I learned this as a player, that the business of football is not about – necessarily the the paycheck that you that you pay somebody it, it's about the organization trying to get younger better cheaper players and it's the veterans players job to not let that happen and it's a great dynamic and it was basically what I lived as a player you know I would watch every draft I watched every single draft this was back when it was on two days. It was Saturday and Sunday. And I would sit down there and I would watch the draft in the offseason because I wanted to know who, you know, Bill Belichick was going to draft to try to take my spot. And I, I, I held them off for as long as I could. And then eventually, um, you know, they moved on and they made a decision. So it, it's about, you know, guys being able to, to do their job effectively you know, continuing to do that at a high level, regardless of age. That's, that's all we're looking for is, is guys that care about the team, uh, whether that be a 20-year-old player coming out of the draft or, you know, a 34-year-old player. We, we just want everybody to do their job effectively. Cohen is sending us this question from Lawrenceburg. Who do you think can step up and be big leaders in the locker room in 2020? Well, it's not who I think. It's, it's who develops into those roles. I mean, I think that we have – you know, really some, some, some great leaders. Uh, I'm excited to see uh, Ryan continue to, to lead our football team. I'm excited to see Derek continue what I thought was his biggest improvement was in leadership. Uh, I'm excited to see that uh, continue uh, whenever we can get back. And, and I know that these guys are staying in contact with each other. That, that's what teammates do. Uh, ben Jones is always a, a great leader. Um, you know, defensively, Kevin Byard and, and, and Kenny, you know, Rashawn is going to continue, you know, Daquan, these, these guys. And it, it's going to, you know, leadership evolves as, as players come back and they, they see guys that are to willing to, to, to put the, the team in front of their own personal needs. And hopefully in, in some sort of way, everybody could lead. Want to do a hashtag OTPQ, Amy? You got one you like or you want me to do another one? No, I'll tell you what, these are flooding in. Coach, the people want to talk to you. They're bored, Amy. <laughs> it, it's the, the quarantine 2020. They're bored. Well, here's Dylan from hashtag OTPQ. He says, it hasn't felt like this to be a Titans fan in years. You came into a team that has been through some things. How have you been able to come into this program and make such a dramatic turnaround? Well, I don't look at it like that. I, I look at um, my job is to try to lead a uh, championship organization uh, on the field um, in unity with, with John and the personnel staff. Um, my, my first job is to hire great coaches who um, teach, develop, and inspire the players at their position uh, to do their job and to do it better than what they did before and try to to lead, lead a coaching staff and lead the players and, and help John evaluate players that are gonna come onto our team. So I enjoy every day. I, I miss the interaction uh, with, with the coaches and, and getting into different meetings. And then I'll certainly miss um, if we would start virtually, uh, the, seeing the players when the off season program would, would start. That, that's what I enjoy the most. You mentioned those relationships and here's another question from hashtag OTPQ. Eric asks, how much of an advantage is the great relationship that you have with John Robinson? How much of an advantage is that going to give the team, given that this year's draft is so unique? You know, I think we're very conscious of the types of 
of people and players that we bring uh, onto the team. I, I understand that we, I have a great responsibility uh, to, to bring guys in that uh, either exhibit you know, the, the, the qualities that we want in our culture or ones that we feel like can quickly adapt to those uh, qualities. I don't want veteran players, I don't want guys on our team to look at me and say, you know, why, why the heck is this guy here, coach? Like, this guy isn't one of us. I think about that a lot. Terrence from Houston has this question. I understand football is a business, but I'm still trying to wrap my head around the Jarrell Casey trade. Can you give us fans a little more perspective on the trade? You know, we're just trying to do what's best for the football team. And, uh, you know, Jarrell was an amazing player. The two years that I was here, he was, he was great for our football team. And there's tough decisions that you have to make every year. And, you know, just like we talk about with all decisions, whether it's on-field decisions or decisions about practice or personnel, you know, we're trying to make them with the best interest of the football team in mind. And that, that's really what it came down to. Matt from Wadsworth, Ohio. Back home. Yeah, he's from back home. What have you been binge watching during quarantine? Tape, you know, tape. And, uh. but, uh, but it, you know, I mean, I, I will get uh. Uh, Ozark. I finished Ozark, fell into the trap of the Tiger King, unfortunately. The, every, you know, the kids were watching it. Jen was watching it. And it almost got, it was like back when I used to watch Jerry Springer, when you thought that the next episode couldn't be any more ridiculous than the one before. That's what I felt like I was watching. I've got one from Kaysen, who's 11 years old, and he's in Thompson Station. He's very knowledgeable. I know him. He says, my favorite player is Ryan Tannehill, and I'm super happy he'll be our quarterback for a long time. I was wondering who your favorite player was when you were a kid. Great question. I was a Cleveland Browns fan because we lived near Cleveland, so I loved uh, Bernie Kosar, and I, and I learned to throw sidearm because of Bernie. But I was also a, a Dallas Cowboy fan, and so – uh, I love Tony Dorsett, could remember that 99-yard touchdown run and, and watching him play for the Dallas Cowboys. This one is from Taylor, and he says, do you believe that you have an advantage over other teams' offenses because we have brought back so many people on the offensive side of the ball? Well, I don't think that gives us an advantage, but I think that, you know, the, the, the familiarity um, is going to be critical this year. You know, having the unknown of, of when we could be back in the building or when we could have our players, you know, we're, we're still going to be able to do a lot of work uh, remotely and, and through, you know, video conferencing, whenever that may happen. But we're going to do things differently. And I know that we've talked to Arthur and I've talked to him and the staff and, you know, we're planning on fixing some things that we need to, you know, be better at and, and trying to add some things where our players can could probably that could probably help some more of our players but you know everybody's going to be ready there's going to be a training camp so I, I don't look at anybody having an advantage um you know other than just familiarity with each other so i want to go to rockland california and this is from matt he says you always mention that you want a roster filled with players who love football but what if there's a football player who is incredibly talented but he doesn't love the game would you add a player to your football team who sees football as just his job, not something that he loves? To be able to, to play this sport uh, professionally, you have to love it because it hurts. It's painful. Um, the, the, the time demands dealing with injuries and, and just the, the sacrifices that you have to make. It would be hard just to say, man, I'm just doing this just to pick up a paycheck. It would eventually show, and other players who love it more would, would probably pass you up. Carlos in Jackson, Mississippi. Mike, is there a noticeable difference in wearing white jerseys versus dark jerseys in the summer months? You know me, Mike. You always talk <laughs> about jerseys, and uh, I, I don't know what we're wearing. I don't know what we're wearing until I get to the locker room. But did you buy that when you were a player? You wanted to wear the white jerseys in September and October when it was hot? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, it was it, it, it kind of makes a little bit of a difference just from a temperature standpoint. But I don't think that it, uh, you know, psychologically maybe it does. I, I, I do know that I love our white uniforms. Uh, Me too. You know, those are, those are, you know, I talk about that all the time. They're sweet. All right, Amy. 
Hit us. Here's one from hashtag OTPQ. Send in your questions, guys. We are really getting them answered right here on the OTP. Coach, on a particularly egregious call by the refs, how hard is it to keep your cool on the sidelines? It's difficult, but I've uh, tried to, you know, do a good job of, of vomiting in my mouth without anybody seeing it. So <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's, you know, we fumble or there's a bad call. They all make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. And uh, our, officiating our game is difficult. And I understand that. I want to try to teach our players the rules so they understand what the rules are and how they can use them to their advantage. And so I have to keep my composure so that our players see, you know, th this is the guy that's leading our team and, you know, he's going to go on to the next play and we're going to, we're going to deal with whatever happens and, and we're going to try to find a way to win. Another one from hashtag OTPQ. Coach, what's the main thing that you're doing differently to prepare for this year's virtual draft? We're making sure that we're getting as much personal interaction with the players as we possibly can. You know, the skill set, Amy, is so similar between players at this level when you get to this point, when you get to the top, that it's about the fit. You know, it's about the, us really liking the guys fit for our football team um, and, and not necessarily a skill set. The skill sets are going to be similar. They're going to – the guys that need to be long are going to be long and athletic and the ones that need to be fast are fast and, you know, the ones that need to be strong are strong. And it's about what's this guy going to look like? Do we want to coach this guy and we want to bring him onto our football team? But I got one, Amy, that I like. All right. Kyle, Kyle from Wichita, Kansas. If you had to pick one player on this year's roster to quarantine with, who would it be and why? Who would it be and why? Um, probably somebody who would be the quietest. <laughs> <laughs> so not Taylor. So yeah. he's out. Taylor's out. <laughs> um, probably somebody that doesn't use a whole lot of toilet paper. That would be – Ben good. Jones would probably be out. <laughs> Just a hunt. No. I, I love our team, Mike. You know I do. I love I – I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be sad because I know it's probably going to happen. You know, we're not going to start this thing on time. And, you know, I'm going to have to be able to find ways to, to visit with these guys through the video conferencing and, and also with their coaches. And um, that's going to be important. You know, because that, that's why you coach, you know, I mean, you coach to help players and to make them better. And, you know, you, you have to be around them and, and you enjoy the, the bond of, of this game, whether you're playing it or coaching it. Speaking of players, here's another question from hashtag OTPQ. What is it about A.J. Brown that made him such a threat in the past game? Well, I think he's, 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 he's got a really good play strength. I think he, his play speed is very good. Um, it's excellent. I think he's got strong hands. I think he's an instinctive player. I think he acts like a professional. I think that he is, is, is a serious person by nature, but the, the more comfortable that he got around us and his teammates, uh, the more that that personality came out and, and was, allowed him to, to flourish. Matt from Bluefield, West Virginia. Just wanted to ask about Jeffrey Simmons and what you're looking to see from him in his second year. Do you expect him to take a massive leap forward this season? Well, what I expect is that Jeff continues to improve, uh, to continue to, to be coachable, to, to work on the techniques and the fundamentals that it's going to allow him to see um, that improvement. You know, and just, just be coachable, just like he is, continue to work hard. He's another young player that is fun to coach because he can only get better. And, and there's a lot of things that he can improve on, and he understands that. So he's got a great skill set. He's got a great demeanor. And he's got a great heart. And, uh, you know, he loves his teammates. Coach Jerron from Dallas, Texas asks, do you think the Titans will ever do hard knocks? That's something that, that the league approaches certain teams with every year. Um, you know, I'm not in a position to answer that question because um, you know, I don't think that we've been approached, at least not to my knowledge. Um, it, after the first day of doing it in Houston, I don't think that it was a distraction one bit. I, I, don't, I don't think it was. You, you didn't even notice um, that you had a microphone on, the, the cameras, um, and everybody involved with the, with the NFL films was, 
was unbelievably professional. It was well produced. Um, you know, I think that there there was more hype to it about anything than what actually you know transpired on the field or in meetings. All right, so here's one from Donovan in Los Angeles. What facial hairstyle will Coach Vrabel be going with this year? I don't think we've made a decision on that. We're trying to keep the gray out right now is what we're trying to do. <laughs> we I got bad news shorter. on that, Coach. We mm. found that shorter is better. I will say we did quarantine haircuts and uh, Jen, Jen cut everybody's hair. So if there's any nicks in there, we can uh, blame her. But – we did quarantine haircuts in, in the in the tub the other day. Coach, is there an advisory board on this? Do you have multiple opinions on the facial hair decision? No, just one, just me. <laughs> All right, I have one more question from hashtag OTPQ. Coach, how often do you reach out to a college coach you know in order to get further details about a player you might have on your draft board? Yeah, all the time. You know, all the time. Those are great relationships and – and, and those are the, the, the teams and the coaching staffs that are preparing our players. That, that's, our, that's our farm system. I mean, and those are great coaches. They're, they're unbelievable coaches. They're mentors for, for these players that are coming out of high school. So that's a great resource for us. And, and those guys are always willing to, to share opinions and thoughts and, and to be honest about a player's strength and, and weakness. And so, um, you know, those are – coaches that have been with some guys for, for three or four years. And it's important that, uh, that you try to reach out to, to get their opinion on, on certain players. Have you already figured out with your coaching staff and with Frank Perino and with everybody with whom you work, he, of course, your strength and conditioning coach, have you already figured out how the virtual off season is going to work? Have you already made a plan for that as it was scheduled originally to start April 20th? Yeah, I mean, there, there's been, I mean, there's obviously planning, Mike, and there's things that have been, you know, talked about and, you know, we're in the process now of getting those iPads out to those players and, you know, waiting on, on some more information from the league on, on when that may start and should start and, and what that's going to look like. Uh, there's some negotiations, I think, that are, that are happening now with, with the league and the Players Association. So really, you know, we're, we're waiting to see and get some direction from the league uh, as to what that may look like. But there are certainly things we're working through uh, internally that we've, we've discussed, that we've done. We've practiced runs, talking about security and, and, and things that, you know, that are critical, um, you know, to our, to our players and, and to our team. You good, Amy? I'm good. That was fun. That it was, was fun. fun. Coach, you want to say something to the season ticket members who are with us for this edition of the OTP? I hope that everybody is staying safe and healthy. And those of you that are in, um, you know, the medical field, I want to thank you uh, for your for your service. I want to thank you for your commitment to the Titans, to our organization. I would ask that you try to recruit some friends uh, to bring them down to join us uh, at the stadium to watch our team, to support our team. And again, we're going to try to do more of these. We're, we're going to try to, to make you guys as involved as we possibly can in our team and in our organization. Now you think about, uh, for example, our partner for over 20 years, uh, St. Thomas, and, and what the folks there are doing. I know they mean a lot to us as a partner, and certainly we know what they and other healthcare workers are doing at this time. I mean, unbelievable work. And they deserve our thanks and applause at every turn. It's gutsy and it's very special. And clearly, Coach, it's making a difference. I think it is. And, and hopefully that we can, we can continue to try to exhibit those same qualities that they have here in the last month, the, the resiliency um, and, and, and the determination uh, to do their job. Coach, we appreciate the time. I know you've got to get to another interview as you're, you're talking to guys and working throughout the day. You're scheduled tightly. So I know for the season ticket members and for everybody who enjoys the official Titans podcast, we appreciate you making time for us. Absolutely. Give a shout out here to Brian and Ashley for working behind the scenes. They are great. And we wouldn't be able to do what we do without them back there. He's talking about Brian Myers and Ashley Farrell, and you're absolutely right. Thanks for making this happen, and thanks to all of you. On behalf of the head coach of the Tennessee Titans, Mike Vrabel and Amy Wells, Mike Keith reminds you, this has been the OTP. Peace.